everyone, I'm Rihanna from Rihanna Reports and today we're going to talk about how you can earn $300 to $1,000 a month pet sitting. So I am a part-time pet sitter in addition to my other side businesses and my full-time job and depending on the time of the year, I can make from $300 to $1,000 a month doing this. So there are a few things you want to know about pet sitting and there are a few misconceptions. Number one is that you don't make a lot of money pet sitting. Number two is that you, this is for unskilled or uneducated people. And number three is that it's hard to find clients and to get repeat business, to get enough business to make this a part-time side hustle. So I'm gonna clear up some of those misconceptions right now. I make $20 per half an hour visit for one dog plus $5 for each additional dog. That means I usually make about $25 per half an hour visit because I usually do houses with two or more dogs. For every hour, that means I make $50 an hour pet sitting. There is drive time involved, but if you're in a city location where there's not a lot of drive time involved, you can conceivably make a good $40 an hour pet sitting, which is an amazing amount of money for a side business. Second misconception that this is for unskilled or uneducated people. I don't know a lot of side businesses where you can make up to $40 an hour if you're completely unskilled and uneducated. It does take a lot of love and time and effort to do pet sitting properly and to run a good business. So people expect you to be prompt and punctual and on time. People expect you to be reliable and take care of their pets whenever they ask you to. People expect you to follow directions, very complicated directions at times when they have multiple animals and they don't want you to skip a step because they're paying a decent amount of money for this. This is a great side business for anybody, whether you're a lawyer or a waitress or a high school student or a retired person or anybody in between. All you have to do is love animals to be a great pet sitter. The third misconception and the one I'm going to help you with today is that you can't get a lot of clients pet sitting. The way that I do it without ever spending a dime on marketing or sourcing clients is through rover.com. So there are a lot of sites like this. There's wag.com, care.com, petsitter.com, among others. But I believe that Rover, especially in my area, is the best for me and probably the best for most people because of a few advantages that Rover has over other pet sitting sites. Number one, they have insurance, liability insurance for their pet sitters. Number two, they have uh, money back guarantees if something goes wrong. Number three, they do all of your marketing and booking for you. So basically, I don't have to do anything. Sometimes I post this site once a month on Facebook or Twitter or Craigslist. Most of the time, I do absolutely nothing at all and I still get a lot of bookings and repeat clients. And I do this through my profile. So I fill out my profile. Basically, you sign up, then fill out your profile, then they do a back background check on you, and as soon as the background check passes, they start putting your profile up on the site as an available sitter in your area. So if somebody wants to pet sit, they come along, they put in their zip code, and their requirements and the pet sitters for that area pop up. So if somebody puts in my zip code, the, my um, profile actually does pop up a little bit sooner than other profiles because I've been doing this so long and I have a lot of testimonials. As a new sitter, your profile might pop up a little bit lower on the line, but as you start booking clients and getting repeat business, just make sure that you ask your clients to leave feedback. As you get great feedback, people will automatically naturally choose your profile first for your area because they want people who they trust with their dogs. So a lot of people will book on Rover other than going through Craigslist or through another ad because Rover does a background check and Rover has feedback so they know that somebody safe is taking care of their dogs. The next part of this video is I'm going to flip over to a Rover screen and I'm going to show you my profile and why it's successful. So I'm going to show you how to sign up, how to go do your background check, and how to fill up your profile. If you want to, go ahead and click the Rover link down below and sign up first so you can follow along as we do the profile. I find that's helpful. Or you can wait until you watch the tutorial visit and then go sign up. So I think there's totally enough business out there for everyone and I'm willing to help you set up your profile if you have any questions. Once you sign up and if you have any questions on what rates to set for your area, what choices to select on the profile, and how to write a good profile description and what photos to put up, go ahead and put your questions in the comment box down below and I will answer anybody's questions in the comments and we can all help each other be successful at Rover. So I am going to help you now with your own Rover profile 
in just two seconds it's going to flip over to show you a rover screen and we'll walk through setting up your rover profile again if you have any questions post them down below and let's get started okay so now let's take a look at rover and the how to create a profile again this is the website that i use to find and uh, book clients on and it is again completely free they just charge a portion of your fees that you charge to the client so you never have to pay anything out of pocket to rover so i go to rover.com if you do not have a profile yet you're going to click sign up up here on the left i signed up with my facebook because it's super super fast you can sign up with your Google. It's also super fast. Once you sign up for everything, then it'll have you sign in. Maybe you have to confirm an email. I don't remember that portion of it, but it's very quick to sign up. And then after you sign up, you're going to sign in. So I'm going to show you what a completed profile looks like and the portions that you want to definitely fill in to get some work. So I sign in via my Facebook. And this is what it looks like once you sign in. This is Honey, we'll talk about that later in another video. So this is what it looks like once you sign in and sign up. I have some emails here because I'm an active member. You will probably not have anything right there yet. You'll go up here to the upper right hand side and click where it says your name. It will show you once you have visits, your booking score and your repeat score. Booking score of 96 is very good. That means that 96% of all of the people that contact me, I end up booking for a visit. Repeat score is very good. Also, 97% of all of the people that I book end up booking repeat performances. So once you have a Rover profile and you start working consistently, you want to make sure that you get really good reviews from your clients and keep these scores up. As you keep these scores up, you're going to appear to people as they're looking for pet sitters and they'll see your score and your reviews and they'll end up booking you more if you have a better review. So I'm going to go over here to my dashboard. And this is what your dashboard looks like. As you can see on the left hand side, I have a message from a couple different people. These are pretty old. And then it shows my availability for two weeks. So you will get this when you're first setting up. And you're going to want to click on the days that you can do or can't do. So if it's green, that's a day that you can do. If it's grayed out, that's a day that you can't do. So I do all days, I'm always available, and I click confirm availability. It'll remind you to uh, confirm your availability every couple weeks. Um, if you do not confirm your availability, you won't appear in search results for people, so you wanna make sure that you always keep this edited and up to date. When there's a special weekend like Labor Day, 4th of July, Christmas, or the holidays, they always put the holiday availability here. You can just easily put, I'm not available for Labor Day, I'm not sure, or I am available. If you mark yourself available for a holiday weekend, then you will get bookings. You will get definite bookings on those holiday weekends if there is a lot of business in your area. So this is my balance currently. I typically withdraw my balance every single week, so right now it's zero. As I work, the money comes in here to my redeemable balance, and I can remove it here by just clicking withdraw uh, money. So promo codes are if you're booking a sitter, and I don't book sitters myself because I'm always available to sit, so I always am able to sit for my clients. So sitter resources, you can take a Rover 101 class. I do recommend taking this if you're a new sitter. It gives you a lot of information on being a good pet sitter. If you're a good pet sitter, you get good reviews, get more bookings. It's totally free to take this and it will also help you with the Rover site. And then these are my dogs. So if you have pets and you have not pet sitted yet, I highly recommend that you add all of your pets here so that people know that you have experience with pets, experience with different types of pets. I have a pit bull, a Jack Russell, a Husky, and a Terrier. So putting my pets here shows to people that I have experience with all different size dogs. So you can just click add a pet by adding them here. You can add their pictures, their ages, their special requirements. This is typically so that if you're looking for a pet sitter, the site will tell people what kind of pets you have. But I put this here so it looks um, on my profile, it shows to people that I have experience with these type of pets. Next, we're going to go up to the top. We're going to click on um, photos. Photos is where you can add pictures of your own pets or pets that you've watched. And this shows all of my pets here. So that's my photo album. 
And that gets updated when you add those pets in that other pet section. So this will show on your profile also. So then I'm going to go up here and show you the calendar one more time. You can set your availability on that calendar that I first showed you, or you can confirm your availability on a longer calendar. So this is important because it gives you the amount of spaces that I have booked. So you can set how many spaces you allow for dog sitting. So it says 0 of 6 booked on the 25th. That means I have six spaces available that I will allow people to book without ever contacting me, just going on the site. Seven spaces for dog walks. So I have 13 spaces during the day. I never book that many. I just leave that many open just in case. And then um, you can change this at any time. So these are your spaces. Uh, settings over here for the calendar. This is important to set as a new dog walker. So go over here to update dog spaces and these are your general settings that you want to set. What's the maximum distance you'll travel to get to any client home? I put 25. I live really far out from anybody so I need to put at least 25 miles there. If you live in a city you can put 5 miles, 10 miles or less and you'll still get visits booked. I put, I can sit, do six drop-in visits. We talked about the different kind of visits. I only do drop-ins and walks, and I can do seven walks. If I change that, it'll change it to four or four on that calendar, so only four people per day will be able to set times. So you can also set your walk times. I work from home, and my husband helps me with the dog walking, so we can do walk, dog walks and visits anytime, 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you work, maybe you want to take these off, and you only want to do visits or walks from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. So you can set that there. Um, what is your cancellation policy for drop-in visits? I put moderate. It explains the settings right here, what is moderate. You can also put strict or flexible. Flexible means that more people will be able to cancel on you without advance notice. I don't like that because it takes away a possibility of booking somebody else. So I'm going to return that to moderate. Save that and go back here. You also have services, rates, service options, and pet preferences. If you're a sitter, you need to set these um, up before you start sitting. So you'll set up your services. Now, I will say, that if you are available and they tell you here too, to sit dogs in your home, stay overnight, you will get bookings like crazy. Even if you live out in the middle of nowhere like I do, people like to be able to leave their dogs overnight. So you will get a, a booking sooner and um, be able to get more testimonials faster if you're able to have dogs overnight. I am not because I have five dogs of my own, so I have never done dog boarding overnight in my home. Um, but if you're able to do that, you have a safe place to keep them, I would definitely recommend turning that on active. I'm going to turn that off now. You also have the ability to set house sitting. That means that you'll go and sit in somebody's house overnight, take care of their fish, their birds, their pets, whatever they need overnight, and you can set the prices for that. These are the drop-in visits that I do. Um, they recommend that you are there for at least 30 minutes. You can stay longer if your client is okay with it. I have some dogs that I love that I will stay up to an hour with to play with, pet, and um, feed, especially if their parents are away for a really long time. I'll spend more time with them. Away mode is if you're on vacation. You don't have to turn off your profile or your settings. All you have to do is set away mode and then you, nobody will be able to book on your profile. And then when you come back, just click um, that you're back and turn off away. If you want to do repeat clients only, if you um, for some reason are trying to reduce your business to do something else, or you don't want to deal with new clients because they're a little more stressful and you already have a clientele built up, you can set to do repeat clients only. And then only people who have you pet sitted before on Rover, you'll be able to book if you have this on. So I turn that off because I always take new clients. Doggy daycare means that they can drop off the dog in the morning, go to work or wherever they're going and pick up the dog in the afternoon. You work out with the client when they're going to drop off the dog and when they're going to pick them up and you set your pricings for that. So you can turn that on or off. Again, you can set away mode or repeat clients only specifically for each different setting. So that's great. Maybe you only want to do dog walks for repeat clients, but you'll do drop ins for new clients. These are 30 minute dog walks. I set this up. Most people like me just to drop in visit with their dogs because I do um, 
watch a lot of older dogs that can't walk for that long so I end up playing with them or sitting with them instead of walking them but if you live in a city and you're willing to do dog walks people really like to have their dogs walked especially if they live in apartments and you'll get bookings from that so save and continue next you're gonna set up your rates so your rates right here you keep 80% 85% of your earnings the other 15% goes to Rover so that's the only time you ever pay Rover comes directly out of the client payment does never comes out of your pocket so you don't see it and you just make sure that you set your pricing to reflect what you want to receive for that visit so if I do a drop-in visit I charge the client $20 I keep 17 of that that's perfectly fine for me in the area that I'm in. The price for dog walking is very low, for dog visits is very low. So $20 keeping 17 for 30 minutes is totally reasonable. If you live in a big city, you can totally charge more than that. If you do overnights, you can charge way more than that. So let me save and continue. And then to set your pet preferences. You wanna set your pet preferences before you go live. So what size of dogs do you accept? Some people do not want to watch giant dogs or large dogs. That would include things like Great Danes um, for giant dogs or pit bulls even for large dogs. So I love pit bulls and will watch them all the time. Some people are wary of them or don't feel that they can handle them on a walk, so they'll turn those off. Medium dogs are medium-sized dogs like terriers and tiny dogs like chihuahuas fall into the small dog section. Do you accept cats? I do watch cats. Cats are so easy to watch. You come, you feed them. Sometimes they don't even want to talk to you or come near you, so it's a great little side thing to do a cat. I only charge $5 extra per pet, so if somebody has a dog and three cats, um, I usually only charge them an extra $5, not $5 per cat. So you can work that out with your clients. Do you accept puppies under one years old? I put yes, puppies are much harder. You gotta make sure that you're used to dealing with the puppy. Um, they don't listen, they're not trained, um, they pee on the floor, and um, they're adorable. So I do puppies and I'm willing to deal with everything else. So save and continue. So after you fill out all of those basic things, you're gonna wanna make sure that you fill out your details. I'm not gonna set that right now because it does have personal information on it, but you should click on that and check it out. And then a background check. So your last thing that you're gonna do is a background check. I already have the badge. Congratulations, you passed the background check. It's very, very important that you do the background check. Nobody wants to leave their dogs with somebody they don't feel is safe. So if you wanna get bookings, you've gotta do the background check. Click on this link that you'll see here on the background check, fill out all the information. Rover will do the background check for you and give you a badge that will appear on your profile when you are passed. And that's very quick. It happens very quickly. So once you do everything, you've done your background check, you're going to click promote. You can either just click this link and put it on Facebook groups, your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you want. Or you can click on post on Facebook, post on Craigslist, post on Twitter, and it'll take you directly to a pre-populated link on one of these social media sites to promote your business. So this is the cover picture that I put because I thought it was cute, and I will post that on Facebook. And that goes directly onto my Facebook, and people can see that I'm available to pet sit in my area. So... The so last thing I'm going to show you is what my profile looks like. This is my profile. So this is what my profile looks like, all filled out. I have a response rate of 100%, which means every time a customer uh, messages me, I respond to them one way or another. Uh, please excuse the noise in the background, that's my dogs. They um, are bound and determined to interrupt this video. Um, it shows my prices on the left hand side. It shows all my photos here, my reviews, my preferences, and my availability. So once you send out your profile, this is what people will see and they will be able to go ahead and book whatever you're offering for them. It will send you a message on the site and you can agree to accept it or not. You do not have to accept every visit. Um, I normally do because I um, do want the money and I only sent the, uh, set the availability for what I'm available, but sometimes, very rarely, you may get a dog or a location that's not right for you, just politely tell them that you can't take that visit and it will not harm your Rover profile, Rover profile in any um, way except for the booking score. So just make sure that you set your availability for when you're actually available and you should be fine. 
So that's it. That's Rover. That is how to set up your Rover profile. If you like this video and want to see more videos like it, please go ahead and subscribe down below. Click the notification bell. Um, I did include a link to Rover down below if you do want to join Rover. Again, please go ahead and put any comments and questions that you have. I will definitely help you set up your Rover profile and answer any questions you have about pet sitting, how much money you can make, what to set your prices for for your area, anything you have questions on, I'm happy to help um, anybody out there on my channel. So that's it, and I will talk to you later. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you next time.